What is happening everyone? My name is Kieran and if you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing a talk that I did back in March at uh, an event called Vegan Life Live and the talk was about a more sustainable you. So the talk sort of focused around three key points um, through my journey um, of understanding and real, really key moments that sort of led me to changing my attitudes towards sustainability. So for me, those three key moments were realizing that my actions had consequences. I needed to be intentional in what I was doing so that I would make decisions based on these consequences and that I would choose to do things or not to do things consciously and intentionally. And the third thing was finding my why realizing why I was going to make these changes, why I was going to reduce plastic, why would I uh, change my diet, why would I try to reduce my flying and use other transports, all these sorts of things. And the end of the talk, I, I talk about 10 top tips to do with sustainability. And these are not only about sustainability, but about life in general. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the talk. It was my first one, so definitely was a bit nervous in this. But uh, I hope you can forgive me for that and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'm looking forward to uploading a lot more content soon. So uh, yeah, as always, let's dive in. Oh. The more sustainable you. And I want to start this off by showing you this picture. Now you might be thinking, why am I showing you a bathroom? What has this got to do with sustainability? And you may pick out things and think, oh, it could be, maybe it's something to do with plants, maybe it's something to do with water. And you'd be right with the, the water part. And this photo here is the closest that I've ever come to capturing sustainability or climate change in a picture. And that's because of the context. This photo was taken in South Africa, but more importantly, Cape Town. And Cape Town has recently come out one of the worst droughts it's experienced in three, sorry, in a hundred years. And the bucket signifies the water they have to capture from the shower to use to flush their toilets, to use it for rainwater elsewhere. And so this is, this is sustainability, this is what it's really about. Now essentially, Cape Town had day zero. Now, Day zero was the day that water would no longer run from the taps. Apart from in hospitals and schools, there would be no water. Now imagine if you were in the UK and you turned on the tap and there was nothing. How would you feel? How would, how would that make you feel? People had to queue for hours to get their 50 litre ration of water from the government. And there were fines implemented and all these sorts of things. This was, this was a disaster. This is a crisis. Fortunately though, due to some, some good weather in terms of uh, two months of solid rain, Cape Town came out of day zero. It's now been pushed back to 2020, so it's still an issue that needs to be addressed, but it's not so immediate. And what I saw, that photo you saw, was after day zero had gone. So people are still living with this behavioral change. And what was the action taken? The actual small steps, so a 50 litre limit was put in on, the, on Cape Town. And these people, for example, if when you look at a 90 second shower that uses 15 litres, how, how many of us have longer than 90 second showers? People had to reduce their impact that way. Behavioural change, changing their habits, changing what they usually do. In three years that they were going through drought, they reduced their water consumption by 60% the city of Cape Town, 60%. Now why is this important? It's because these people came together in a crisis. There was a threat they faced. It affected everyone, regardless of age, gender, race, wealth. Everyone was affected the same, and that meant they, they had to act. And what this comes down to is that individuals coming together to act for a common cause for a crisis can have a significant impact. And that's why I want to tell you, and the speech today is about how you can live even more sustainable lives. And that's what we're going to talk about. So, what do I mean by sustainability? I won't go into too much depth, but sustainable development is what is used to describe it in a global perspective, because they needed a common definition to tackle. 
And sustainable development is said to be development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And so if we look at sustainability, it's essentially meeting the needs of today without compromising those of the future, getting rid of the development part. And so how are we doing at this? How is sustainability going at the moment? How are we, how's it going? One really good place to start is um, overconsumption. It's Earth Overshoot Day. Now, Earth Overshoot Day is essentially when each year we're given a sort of ration of what the Earth can renew, the resources it can renew. And once we go past that day, we're in overshoot, we are in debt. And so, 2018, by August the 1st, so just past seven months of the year, we reduced all that year's allocation of resources. So there were four months, five months, where we were over-consuming. And this has happened solidly for, you know, however many years this has been going on, we have been over-consuming the resources the planet produces. So over-consumption. This report came out just at the end of last year, and it's probably the most shocking report that's getting action behind it. It is the IPCC, which is the International Panel of Climate Change's report on well, climate change. And what it says is that we must maintain a 1.5 degree rise in temperatures in order to avoid climate catastrophe. We cannot go above that, because once we do, the impact, as you can see from this diagram, are huge. We are currently about one degree, as temperatures start to rise, we will be experiencing more flooding, more droughts, more intense and uh, frequent disasters. And we're seeing things like coral die-off will happen pretty much mainly at a 1.5 degree. So we're feeling the effects of climate change and we're over-consuming too much. So it's not really uh, going great. So I just thought, I want to start with that, and now I'll just introduce myself a bit. <laughs> Not really how it's done, but my name is Kieran. Um, my Instagram is Semi Sustainable Man, and I like to talk about um, sustainability, activism, and trying to lower everyone's impact and make them more conscious of the impacts they have. And today, I want to take you on a journey with me. So I went travelling. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's not part of the journey. I want to take you on a journey with me. And. This journey is my journey towards living an even more sustainable lifestyle and I'm hoping that the time it's taken me to learn these things and really come accustomed to them, I can pass that on to you and you can do it faster and in a better way. So I'm going to take you to, to three places today. I'm going to take you to, um, where am I signing off? I'm going to take you to Mozambique. We're then going to go to London and finish up in Indonesia. And we won't be flying so it's all good and you can enjoy the sights. And we're going to talk about actions and consequences, intentionality, and finding your why. And I'll explain these as it comes to them. So this was me as a kid. It looked like, you know, I could definitely be a hippie or somebody who talks about the environment, for sure. And one thing I've realized is as I was growing up into my late teens, the environment wasn't something I cared much about. I thought I cared about nature, I thought I cared about animals. But actually, I couldn't really tell if I did, um, looking back at it now. Until, until I went to this conference when I was 16, 17, they talked about energy, water, food, the next 50 years, how we change our behaviours today to enable us to, to continue to live sustainably and the relationship between all these things. That suddenly got me thinking, oh, sustainability sounds pretty important, it sounds like you know, the be all and end all of everything we're doing. So I switched my degree that I was going to study, I went to study sustainability and environmental management at uni, and for three years I worked really hard, um, learning about all the things we're doing. I was, you know, working so hard for the library, friends loved it. And essentially what this taught me was that, looking back on it, although I was studying sustainability, I was learning about it every single day, I understood what was going on on the planet. At no point was I really living it. I was living my life as I would have anyway. And then I thought, how can I, how can I expect other people to change? If I'm learning this, and I'm not changing. So that was a real um, key part in my journey of understanding. And as I promised, I'd take you to Mozambique. This is where I made my first sort of understanding. That, and essentially I was here, I was lucky enough to go traveling after I graduated. Uh, went to Mozambique, spent time surfing all along the coast. Saw plastic, saw it where it was, and it was pretty shocked, you know. It was uh, well, everywhere. 
but it wasn't something that really, really took a hold of me. Until I went to Mozambique, and a couple of days before I went there, there had been a cyclone, and it had run all through the, the area, plastics, debris, everywhere, like 500 meters, 1,000 meters back into the foliage. And I saw that, and I was like, wow, it's hard hitting. But when I came around the corner of this, this area here on the beach, I found a rock pool, and it was sheltered, it was uh, teeming with life, everything there was really, really awesome. But I came around the corner and I saw a pile of rubbish that was stacked up as high as, as tall as me. Everything, plastic flip-flops, straws, lighters. And the area we were in wasn't well populated, it wasn't heavily populated. People didn't have access to these things, so where were they coming from? And what this taught me, and the lesson that came, that came with this, was the people were having actions on the other side of the world. And they were doing things, they're living in a way that was affecting people over here, affecting environments that, that it shouldn't be in. And that process got me thinking about what actions was I, I was taking, how could I reduce my waste so that I'm not contributing to anything like this? And, then, yeah. and this led me to more questions. Do I need this? It's a really powerful thing we can all go away talking about. You know, we live in a consumer society where we're marketed to, we're told we need to buy this to be happy, to look better, to, to fit in with everyone. That's not the case. But we're, we're in this society, we're, we're buying things because we think it will make us happier. And when I start to ask myself, and when you start to ask yourself, do you need this? You start to differentiate between wants and needs. And that's very powerful because it helps you to, to understand. Um, <laughs> helps you to understand why you should be buying things and what you should be buying. And then it also looks at the cost of convenience. That one minute that I spent eating crisps, drinking from a plastic bottle, whatever it was, was that worth the impact of it being on the planet for a hundred years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, and having a knock-on effect that way? And that was uh, really important for me, because the cost of my convenience, in that sense, I didn't want to be convenient anymore. And what I started to do was look at what I already had. What were the things that could help me reduce my waste straight away, the first things? And it was looking to things that could reduce plastic waste. Like it is one of the easiest things to start with because it's everywhere. We're exposed to it on a daily basis. And tote bags, Tupperware, straws, flasks, all these sorts of things. Some of you, some of you will have them lying around and everything like that, but uh, you don't have to buy them. A lot of them you can make, you might already have, and then start using these things, integrating them into your lifestyle. And that should really help you to reduce, at least to start off with the plastics in your life. And that, will hopefully knock on to other things. And that's where my next point comes on to, is intentionality. Now I haven't got a photo of London here, but we're in London, so it's fine. Intentionality, what do I mean by this? I mean living in a way that is conscious. So when I make a decision to, to buy something, to take something, I know what the impact is to the best of my ability. I know where it comes from. I know who it's made by. This consciousness and intentionality of actions is a completely against the consumer society when we buy, buy, buy for the sake of it. And that is really powerful. And the thing that taught me about this was doing a zero waste challenge. Now, a zero waste challenge is where you try and collect all the waste you collect um, across a month and you're trying to reduce everything you send to landfill. So, uh, it's in my bag, no more. Um, I did have a glass jar with everything that I produced across that month. I don't, that's not it, but um, essentially I did the zero waste challenge. Sending no waste to the landfill, I was still recycling, composting and all these sorts of things to see how little I could produce. And it becomes a challenge. When you challenge yourself and you've got this goal, you can start to push yourself. You can really go for it. And that's what I try to do with this. And when you make that connection, I'm going to use this as like my mock jar just for now because I had one or something. When you make the connection that this is the amount of waste you produce, it's powerful. If I don't know how much, if I don't have this here, the visual, I don't know how much I'm producing. And if I don't know how much I'm producing, I don't know what I can do. So when you have a visual, it can be powerful. And we also live in a, as I said, throwaway society. So looking at every different aspect of what you produce, you start to realize. And you know, I did a challenge called Futuristic February recently, and that challenge was to collect everything you produce, to recycle, the non-recyclable, and just to have it there in front of you to see, to do this visual. 
and that was really powerful and um, I yeah again it was a similar sort of thing really taught me about the waste I was producing and uh, yeah I think you guys were pretty chuffed that I'm not zero waste and that I still do produce waste because uh, <laughs> yeah that was me and all the waste that I produced for that month and yeah luckily it wasn't a smaller jar or anything but uh, yeah <laughs> And off the back of this, what I decided to do was launch Minimize March. Now, Minimize March is a, a challenge. Collect everything you produce, collect what you recycle, and look at it, see what you have. But on this journey, you are trying to actively reduce. You create that connection, that understanding of what you're producing, where it's coming from. And by collecting it and reducing it, you go on this journey of intentionality. Your actions start to align with what you're trying to achieve. And this is what's something I've launched. I know it's not the start of March, it's the middle of it, but come get involved. We've got a community around it and it's really, uh, really worth trying out. So this led me to being more intentional. Everything. I started to assess my lifestyle. I started at plastics. And this is why I think tackling is such an important issue because it can drive people to do things that they didn't expect to do. So for example, I started looking, I've recently found, uh, well, I met someone who doesn't fly. She travels and doesn't fly. And she was telling me to go to Bali uses the same CO2 that I would need for, like, in terms of what the, uh, our allocated amount per year, if we want to live in a sustainable world, going to Bali and back does over that. So suddenly I was thinking, wow, flying is pretty bad at impact. I need to reassess my, my relationship with it. And obviously I've traveled already, and so I've been very fortunate to do that, but I'm starting to reassess that relationship now. Fashion. Fast fashion is an issue. It's got a huge start supply chain to end chain use. What happens to it? What resources go into it? When you start to look at fashion and how many people buy things, because again, they're said, they're seasons, they're styles. When that's, what is happening? What resources are going into that? And how can I avoid it? Slow fashion, buying things from sustainable companies, all these sorts of things can really help. Energy, it can be something as simple as turning off your light bulbs. But for me, it came down to um, in my mom's apartment, switching the energy from a fos uh, the electricity from fossil fuel powered to electric, from renew to renewable, and so it's powered by wind turbines, solar. When you start to invest in these things more, when we demand more from energy and um, renewables, the market grows. They become to the momentum becomes behind them, and we'll see a growth in it. We'll see a, a sustainable energy transition. Driving, I started to examine my relationship with that and reduce the amount I drove. And I was driving to places I really didn't need to. I could have been getting public transport, cycling, all these sorts of things. Final one, food waste. Food waste, globally one third of food is wasted. And about 850 million people go to sleep hungry each night. Now that's not right. And how, why should I be wasting food in this privileged position? I shouldn't. So what you can do is start to, you know, look at how much you're buying, look at how much you're consuming, and reduce it. Freeze things, look after them properly, because food is a valuable resource to so many people and yet it gets taken for granted in a lot of places. Other things, buying locally, buying fresh, reducing the impact of the food you consume is huge. Now I want to come on to my third point, which is finding your why. Now I've already mentioned some of the whys behind that, behind my journey, and I'm sure you can think about steps you've taken and finding your why, and why you've done certain things. So if you're vegan here, maybe you've you made that connection to why you went vegan. And for those of you who are finding connections elsewhere, whether it's flying food, we, we find the why and it drives us. It's the most powerful thing because without a why, you have no destination. You have no goal. So this is really important to look for. And I realized this so much, the place I you know, understood this best was, well, that's where I went vegan in uh, Indonesia, but was going to a plant-based diet. So I, I start to examine, you know, I looked at all these other things, I was like, oh, okay, food, food's pretty bad, I, I know about it, but I didn't take, embrace it, I didn't take it on, and we can all do it with plastics, with flying, we can all ignore some of these subjects, and just think, oh, I'll keep them at the periphery, I don't want to think about them. But actually thinking about them is, is what we need to do, because we need a conscious world where to tackle the issues we face. So I started to look at the meat industry and the emissions it had, and that was a completely environmental decision. Step by step, I reduced my red meat. I reduced my, the amount of fish I ate. I reduced the, the chicken I ate. I had eight none. And January the second, third, I decided oh, I'll go vegetarian. You know, ten days later, I caved to some uh, 
chicken nuggets, as I think many you know, starters off with rejecting meat can do. Um, it seems like you nod, so I, I guess you do the same. Or did the same, hopefully. And what that taught me, what that really... Oh, sorry, and then I went vegetarian. And for four or five months I was vegetarian. I was, again, started to look into it a bit more, started to understand a bit more. And I was like, okay, you know, what's that animal? What's the animals? Like, what's going on with them? what's the impact, what's happening to these beings. And the more I started to look into it, the more I decided that, and finding my why, that I couldn't, I couldn't contribute to this. I could no longer cause suffering. My journey's been all about minimizing, and minimi minimizing the impact that I can have, trying to have the least negative impact on the planet, and the biggest positive one. And I didn't want to harm another animal for me to go on this journey. I don't need to, and we don't need to. And so finding my why there was about causing the least amount of suffering to all beings, including the animals. And that is why we're vegan. And so when you find your why, when you look into the reasonings, don't push these things away. Really embrace them. Look into them. Educate yourself. Because that is the best way to understand why you, well, why you should do something and to go forward with it. So I know you came here to learn about sustainability and how to be more sustainable. So I've done my three main keys and maybe a lot of you you know if you're vegan or you're reducing your plastic you know about these you've experienced them but maybe you haven't transferred them into the next zone so you know start to look at that but what i want to talk about now is 10 sort of uh, uh, you can decide if they're top but 10 tips and just to help you on your journey just decide what you really you know hopefully it'll help you out so take small steps consistently like when i said i switched to uh i switched my diet i did it gradually small steps in the right direction and that really led me to um to my end goal you know if we try to jump we try to overstep step yes people can change their diet overnight and stay with it other many people can't many people can't eliminate plastic straight away and i know i couldn't so taking those small steps and getting to where you want to be is the best way and then you keep consistent and your drive your momentum continues forward plan and organize now when you start to try and eliminate places of waste in your life, you will have to be organized with it. And it's not overthinking, it's not too much, but you know, if you're gonna to go to get your food, weight, your food waste free, package free, you're gonna to need to go to a farmer's market or find a supermarket that does it. And you need to make the time. You have to make the time to do this. On a weekend, go like, oh, okay, I'll put them in an hour, hour and a half to go there, do this, to avoid that impact. And yes, not everyone has the, the same structural or financial abilities to go see these things and go do them or buy them. But if you do, you should, um, you should try your best to. And also make sure you're organized. If you're trying to go to low waste, make sure you have your flasks, your Tupperware. Come to events like this with your Tupperwares, flasks, cutlery, straws. Avoid the most amount of waste you can because we, as we've seen, we overconsume and we need to be organized and not create waste. Follow people who inspire you. Now there's so many people in this audience who inspire me who really driven me on my journey to understanding. I follow them, they, they get me pumped. They get me stoked to really keep making a difference and share this information with people. And that's what you need to do, is find people who inspire you. Maybe it's on Instagram, maybe it's uh, YouTube, whatever it is. Find these people and find your tribe. This community, there's a sustainability community on Instagram, some of you might not know, but it's huge, it is powerful. People support each other. They, they just meet up, they have a great time, they share positive positivity, um, information, and follow people who inspire you. If someone doesn't inspire you, then like, why are you following them? If, or if they're just throwing out negative things, why are you following them? Like, increase the positivity that's coming into your life and the people who are with you, and it will have huge impacts on your ability to make these changes and go in the direction you want to go. Start with an interest. So one of my interests was traveling and when I was there doing beach cleanups. So that was an interest for me when I was tackling plastic waste. Some of you might be really interested in fashion and then you can start to think, well, what can I buy? What, what fashionable things can I buy? And how can I buy them more sustainably? Well, you can start secondhand shopping. You can look for more sustainable brands. And yes, there's a cost associated with sustainable brands, but when you're buying quality, you're not contributing to some of the, the issues such as, uh, or the social issues that come with that, the environmental issues, all those sorts of things. So it's more of a fair price in terms of the environmental costs associated. But also secondhand shopping is where to go. I've got friends who literally just 
only secondhand shop and it's so cool and I need to start doing more of that. You'll make mistakes. I've made hundreds throughout my life, not even just a zero waste journey, I've made hundreds of mistakes. I'm sure you have too. I'm sure we've all made mistakes. Maybe one of them was coming here, I don't know. But um, I, when you learn from them, maybe next time you won't come see me speak. Maybe I won't come see you. Anyway, um, what I want to say is that you learn from your mistakes. Say someone gives you a straw here or you take a plastic bag or you know, whatever the impact is, learn from it. Make sure you focus on what happened and how you can avoid it the next time it, it can happen. Because throughout life, regardless of it's zero waste, veganism, whatever it is, if you don't learn from these things, they are mistakes. So just continue to learn, take a message from everything that goes wrong or not as well as you'd like and keep growing, keep going on that journey. Patience, it takes time. Like I said, when I switched my diet, I'm sure some of you felt this when you switched diet. It took time, you can't just change everything all at once. You're reducing your plastic, you can't change everything at once. It's just not possible because there's so much to do. You saw I was talking about flying, food waste, veganism, electricity. I didn't do that all in one night after watching someone talk about it. I took my time and that's what is really, really important. So, and from that, don't beat yourself up. So many people, you make a small mistake. And again, it's, this kind of relates to life, not just in a zero waste journey. So many people make mistakes and they pound themselves and they're like, oh, I should have done better. Never. Don't beat yourself up. There's plenty of other people who are trying to do it. Stay positive. Look at the positive. Set up camp at where you are. Look around. Imagine you're climbing a mountain. How far have you come on this journey? Look around. How much positive have you caused? How much negative have you avoided? By looking at it this way, by looking at the positives, you'll be driven to make that next step, that higher climb. So keep positive, don't beat yourself up, and take the time to appreciate how far you've come. Focus on your own journey. Don't look around for other people. Don't look around at what they are doing. Yes, my people inspire you, but everyone lives a different life. Everyone lives in a different way. And we need to recognize that some people take time to do things, some people don't. Respect other people's journey, focus on your own, and get to where you want to get to for yourself, not for anyone else. Use your voice. This is one of the most powerful ones. We are lucky enough to live in a society where we can use our voice, where I can stand up here and talk at a festival about veganism and sustainability, where I can go for protests in the street and talk about climate change, to tell the government that what I think they're doing isn't right. Use your voice. It can literally just be having a conversation like this, having a conversation to all of you about these issues. And you can take this conversation, take the conversation that you like, and talk to these people. Share your message. Because, you know, that's how people change. And when you do it, come at someone kindly, compassionately. Talk to them, you know, open-heartedly. Never be aggressive. Never be, um, never be too pushful, forceful. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to take something for someone who's forceful. Be nice, be kind, live your life, and people will start to uh, take it on. And this is my final one. I want you to all know this. When you're making these changes, you are having a bigger impact than you realize, because it's not just you. You know, there's a whole product line of what's going on, and one person stopping consuming meat saves hundreds of animals, saves hundreds of uh, liters of water, uh, kilometers of land, these sorts of things. When someone sees someone living a low-impact lifestyle, living a more, I guess, non-conventional lifestyle, they might start to question themselves. They might start to think, oh, why, why he does that? What, what's his reason? They might start to ask questions. They might start to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can try that. I saw he's got a flask. Maybe I should get a flask. These things are really important and never underestimate the impact you're having, especially I've got friends out there who think that they're not doing enough. They are doing more than enough and they have to keep telling themselves because it's easy to beat yourself up like I said but all of you are doing incredible things and just know that the impact you have is so positive and, and just keep going forward with what you're doing. So what I want to just finish up and say is that as I've gone through this journey we can all live an even more sustainable lifestyle. There are so many ways we can look at it and we'll never reach the end of living sustainably because there's so much to do. But each day we can take steps to get to that journey, get to that end destination. Now, there are those tops and tips if you want a photo of that or anything. I, and I just want to say, think about the example I gave at the start, Cape Town. It was thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming together, making individual changes to their lifestyle. 
and it reduced water consumption by 60%. Now, imagine if all of us had this mentality that our impact could reach that. And it can, we just have to believe in it. So I want you to leave this talk, go find something to start on, find something you're interested in, really go chase it. And it could be today. Make a decision and make a start today because that's better than, than never starting at all. So, thank you. Oh, and I'll, any questions? I don't know what time is, but yeah. Yeah? Any questions?